Okay, everyone, I'd like to reconvene the meeting to regular session. I sound like extra loud tonight. That was so fast, everybody was so quiet. <laughs> okay, to start us off, I'd like to go ahead and um, start with the flag salute. And I would like to ask pending board approval, the new Sunny Hills High School principal, Craig, Craig Weinrich, to come up and lead us in the flag salute. Thank you very much. Okay, the board has not completed the discussion on the closed session items, so we will be meeting again in closed session following regular session. The board will report out any action taken during closed session when the meeting is reconvened to regular session later this evening. All right, moving on to approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Thank you, Marilyn, a second? Thank you, Vicki. Do board members have any questions? All right. Grace, would you like to cast a preferential vote? I approve. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Next is approval of the minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the March 8th regular board meeting and the minutes of the March 29th special board meeting? I move. Second. Thank you, Vicki. Second. Thank you, Marilyn. Um, do board members have any questions? Grace, would you like to cast a preferential vote? I approve. Okay. Um, board members, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion passed, thank you. Um, next is acknowledgement of correspondence to the board. Do any board members have any correspondence that they'd like to acknowledge? Okay. Um, all right, Grace, next is student board member report. So I'd like to call on our student board member, Grace Lee, to give her report. Yes. Good evening, Superintendent Dr. McLaughlin, President Klatsker board members, and distinguished guests. This is my student board member report for April. Recently in my AP Psych class, we counted how many weeks we had school left, and we found out we only have seven more weeks until graduation, which is mind-blowing. I feel like just yesterday I gave my first board report, and now this is my second to last one. As we head into the last couple months of schools, ASB and SAC have wrapped up some exciting events. I'll just do a quick round of school updates and then discuss our broader SAC events. Troy has been preparing for the intramural dodgeball competition and are preparing for their cabinet and class elections. Sunny Hills ASB wrapped up their prom last weekend at Hangar 21 and class elections are also underway. La Habra spent their time coordinating with clubs to make sure there are no loose ends and are planning class elections. Fullerton is currently having their Kindness Matters Week on social media and on campus. They're preparing for their annual cornhole tournament. Buena Park ASB had their prom last week and is currently working on class selections and next year's ASB interviews. La Vista had a donut eating contest this past week and they also wrapped up their third quarter club rush. Sonora has their annual Mr. Sonora coming up where senior boys representing various departments are competing in a pageant-like competition. Now moving on to SAC events. On the slideshow, you'll see pictures from our SAC community service event. We were able to make educational care packages for our feeder school district. Lowell Joint and for our school's FACE programs. So, oh. Okay, there we go. Um, I recently got a message from the special education director over at Lowell Joint saying that the students were so thrilled to receive the bags and absolutely loved using all of their new materials in their classes, which was very heartwarming to hear. Second, our long-awaited SAC Symposium was a huge success. We had 250 students from our school's ASB show up and learn about leadership together. Thank you, Mr. Atkins, for letting us use the Sonora High School gym and ramping us up with your pep talk at the beginning of the day. Dr. Zener and Mr. Cazares for helping plan this event so smoothly, and board member Bucci for paying us a quick visit. We had a day full of leadership activities and got to know each other. However, perhaps the most awaited moment was the ASB Spirit Competition, where each school had an hour to prepare for their routine to perform. Leadership Inspiration staff were the judges, and students were judged on their spirit and sportsmanship towards other schools. On the last slide here, you'll see a short clip of our winners, Sunny Hills High School, performing their routine.
<laughs> As you can see, the students were very spirited and it was a fun day all around. SEC is also having our student board member interviews for the 2022 to 2023 school year. In fact, we have some student board member applicants sitting in the audience today to see what a board meeting is like. It's definitely bittersweet, but I'm excited to get to know these wonderful juniors in the upcoming weeks. Thank you, and that concludes my student board member report for April. Thank you, Grace. I really love that we were able to see those those pictures and that video. That was fantastic. Thank you. Okay, next is school reports. So I'd like to turn it over to uh, Dr. McLaughlin to introduce our site principals for their reports. Thank you, President Klasker, member of the board and community and community at home. And yeah, I really appreciate the multimedia approach. So thanks, Grace, for putting that together. Kind of gives us some insight on what happened in that day. So very exciting. Um, we'll go down the line and start with Dr. Berg from Buena Park High School. All right, well, Grace, you really stepped it up. I don't have a multimedia presentation <laughs> plan. <laughs> but thank you, Dr. McLaughlin, President Klatsker, members of the board. As we get closer to the end of the school year, it's time when various accolades begin pouring in for our students, namely the class of 2022. So I'm gonna highlight a number of them in this report and then close with a special note. So I'd like to first recognize a few scholar athletes who have recently signed with universities to play their sport of choice for another four years. Uh, Anthony Cabral, he'll be playing baseball at Marymount University. Selena Martinez will be playing water polo at Gannon College, and she was also the only Northern OC player to receive all county honors, so big deal for her. Um, and Cadence Weingartz will be playing softball at Graceland. So uh, it's such a life-altering opportunity to get paid to play a little kid's game for four more years, and so that's fantastic for these guys. And then we are also recognizing some amazing artists here tonight. I know some are in the room and some are outside, but we also recently completed uh, the Buena Park City Art Show, and so I wanted to recognize a few of those students. Um, Juliana Garland, Catherine Brolin, they placed in uh, oil acrylic. They basically took first and third. Um, charcoal, pencil, and pastel was Andrew Aguilar and Richard Perez. We swept mixed media, first, second, and third place, so it was Justin Chavez, Ava Garcia, and Vanessa Andrade. And then digital art and photography also took first place with Vanquish Tears, um, and that was Alvaro Torres. And then we got a couple special awards, Samantha Hernandez and Jasmine Mercado. They won the Mayor's Award and the Commissioner Chairs Award. So fantastic part of our arts program, and you'll hear more uh, about them from the fantastic art that they had in this art show. And then also keeping with the arts, I'd like to invite you to our first ever collaborative spring musical. That's at the end of the month, and it is Cinderella. So if you have little nieces or nephews or kids and they want to come dressed in a princess outfit, definitely come. It should be an amazing production. And then lastly, um, I'd like to conclude my board report with a special recognition um, tonight for Layla Sandoval. It's been a rough day for us on campus. Um, her life was tragically taken this morning in a fluke accident. And so um, she was new to Buena Park this year and having transferred to us as a junior from another uh, school. But she came to us for our junior ROTC program and our ag program. And she immediately became a contributing member of both. And she made a huge positive impact on both programs. And um, she will definitely be missed by her classmates and her staff. And so I'd like to just have a quick moment of silence on her behalf. Thank you, and this concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Berg. From Sunny Hills High School, assistant principal, uh, until next month, uh, when Mr. Weinrich will be here, but uh, Mrs. Murrieta. Good evening, President Klatsker, members of the board, and Dr. McLaughlin. I would like to note some upcoming events taking place on the Hill. On April 13th, we will celebrate 13 senior athletes for our signing day event. These athletes have committed to play at the collegiate level, and we are very proud of them. Our dance program will be hosting the spring dance concert April 14th through the 16th. I hear it's going to be another year of three sold-out shows if you haven't already gotten your tickets. Mr. Penuelas and the theater department are gearing up for their upcoming show, Lord of the Flies, uh, April 21st through the 23rd. And we would like to congratulate Mr. David Wild as he steps into the role of the head football coach position at Sunny Hills High School. Coach Wild is a Lancer for life and brings the knowledge and passion to the role of head coach. As I conclude my report, I would like to give a heartfelt thanks to our interim principal, uh, Miss Kathy Goff. Uh, her leadership and dedication to our students these last couple of months has been very appreciated by all. 
So that leads me to my final comment. Welcome back to the Hill, soon to be principal, Craig Weinrich. The staff and students and community are excited for your return and are looking forward to working with you as soon as you are board approved. Thank you, and this concludes my report. <laughs> Thank you very much. And yeah, just to uh, add on with Kathy Gawking, um, our ability to honor her today, a uh, long-standing um, Fullerton Joint Administrator and in the community, she's everywhere. So we're going to see her at Rotary, big fan of the arts. Um, so I uh, really appreciate her effort in stepping up. So thanks for acknowledging that. Dr. Minster, Troy High School. Thank you, Dr. McLaughlin, President Klatsker, and members of the board. I'm happy to report that our students are having a wonderful spring semester, and here are a few notable accomplishments thus far. We have seven Troy artists being recognized tonight with the other artists throughout our district. Our Cyber Patriot All Services team returned from national championships in Washington, D.C., having finished second in the nation. It was a very tough and successful competition. Our NJRTC Area 11 champions just returned from the National Drill Athletic and Academic Championships. In this national competition, they also finished second, but they are still in the running for National Distinguished Unit of the Year. And on Saturday, it was announced that our Troy Science Olympia team had won the California State Championship for the 27th time, and I think the 25th time in a row, and will be trying to win a 14th national championship in May. Our students have, are busy. APIB and Cambridge A-level exams are about to begin upon the conclusion of CASP testing this week. Thank you, and this concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Minster. And from La Habra High School, Mr. Eels. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. McLaughlin. President Klatsker, members of the board, La Habra has continued to be a busy and, f and full of success. Some of our NJROTC cat, uh, cadets from our marksmanship team went to a shooting competition this past weekend and were top three finishers in each event out of 34 participants. Five of our ag students placed at the OC Fairgrounds this past weekend in Imaginology. Congratulations to David Minjares, Isabella Gruner, Guillermo Magdalena, uh, Maria Martinez and Juliana Peters. Our spring musical, Shrek, just concluded this past weekend and was a huge success. Lucas Garberg was a phenomenal Shrek. Uh, Courtney Haraguchi sang beautifully as Fiona. Nathan Campbell was hilarious as Lord Farquhar. Aurora Cisneros played three different parts. Uh, Jinji, Team Fiona, and, and was in the ensemble. Ariana Abel was a fantastic Pinocchio and rat dancer. Wow, my absolute favorite was Evelyn Tejada as Donkey. She was outstanding. <laughs> she was really good. Our seniors continue to impress uh, as we have had many acceptances into colleges such as USC, UCLA, Cal Berkeley, and Harvey Mudd, just to name a few. And finally, Highlanders want to thank Mr. Craig Weinrich uh, for his service at La Habra High School for the last nearly two years. We are sad to see you go. Uh, pending board approval, and uh, but excited that he will still be within the district family and will positively be impacting students and staff in the community of Sunny Hills High School. I personally thank you, uh, Craig, for your support, leadership, and all that you've taught me during our time of working. And uh, I'm proud to say that you are an incredible leader that has a high sense of integrity and amazing character. So. Good luck, congratulations, pending board approval. Thank you, and that concludes my report. Thank you from Sonora High School, Mr. Atkins. Thank you, Dr. McLaughlin. Good evening, board president, Klaxer, board members, student board member. Excitement abounds at Sonora High School. I'll try not to sing like I did last Saturday <laughs> at uh, prom uh, that the students enjoyed, uh, but I, I First, let's talk about the college acceptances, as I promised to tell you about in one of my last reports. We've had students accepted into colleges and universities nationally and internationally. Internationally, we've had Samantha Duda accepted to St. Andrew, Andrews College in Scotland. Nationally, we've had students accepted to every UC. We are also so proud of Joy Kling and Anthony Pavlik, who have received acceptance into West Point Academy. These next three recognitions were publicized on our Instagram and our Twitter accounts. If you'd like to check us out, please check us out as SOHS Raiders. All right, just wanted to plug that in. Our JROTC Color Guard conducted the presentation of colors at the Orange County California Federation of Women's Clubs at the La Habra Community Center last Saturday. 
our band's color guard team took home first place on Saturday at the Winter Guard Association of Southern California competition at Fountain Valley High School. It was a tremendous performance that sets them up for a well for their well well deserved competition at on April 23rd for the championship. Last but certainly not least is our dance drill team. They have competed in their state competition last week. They won first place in small and large dance drill and first place in small military competitions. They won second in kick and in their character category. All these items, plus testing, theater performances, Peter and the Star Catcher, sports teams playing thrilling games, prom, and again, Mr. Atkins singing karaoke, it was all happening and exciting times as we begin to wrap up this year, not just strong, but Sonora strong. Thank you for your attention, and that concludes my board report. Thanks, Mr. Atkins from Fullerton High School, Mrs. Rubio. Good evening, Dr. McLaughlin, President Klasker, members of the board. I am happy to report that we are continuing to do great things at Fullerton. Every month we highlight sports, special programs, or staff that are doing amazing things. And today I would like to highlight our Academy of the Arts. We do have some amazing visual art teachers and students that we will celebrate in a moment. So in my report today, I would like to celebrate some of our amazing Fullerton thespians. They were at the California State Thespian Festival this past weekend, and we came back with many awards. I, I hope I don't miss anyone, so here we go. Congratulations to senior Evan Jacobson for receiving the Guy Jones Senior Honor Thespian Scholarship. Donnie Canaday had the honor of reading his own play through her eyes at the festival, and it, it was selected for the 2022 Playworks Playwright Festival as well. Alexis Hemmler, first place uh, win in monologue. She is now a state-ranked performer and has qualified for nationals. Molly Holbrook, first place for, for a win in solo musical. She is now also state-ranked uh, performer and has qualified for nationals as well. Lily McWaters, who had a superior ranking in monologue and has also qualified for nationals. Sydney Rosas, also superior ranking in monologue and solo musical and also uh, qualified for nationals. Jordan Jojo Fairs is also superior ranking in solo musical and is a national qualifier. And Haley Cronin, national qualifier for her super superior ranking as well in solo musical. We couldn't be more proud of our talented students. I appreciate all the work that Mr. Michael Despars has put in to prepare our students for such successful performances, and more importantly, getting them ready for a bright future ahead. I would also like to congratulate Mr. Weinrich for pending board approval. We had the opportunity to have him at Fullerton for a little while um, before we lost him to La Habra, which was sad for us as well, but we couldn't be more excited and happy for you. You will be a great addition to our principal team now. Congratulations, thank you, and that concludes my board report. Thank you, Mrs. Rubio. From La Vista La Sierra, Mrs. Leona. Thank you, Dr. McLaughlin, President Klatsker, members of the board. The end of the third quarter always brings a flurry of graduates to the lion's den. I want to congratulate the 33 La Vista La Sierra students who completed their credits right before spring break and are getting an early jump on college and careers. With that said, the start of fourth quarter always brings a group of new students to La Vista La Sierra. We had 136 students start with us on March 28th, creating a renewed energy on campus. ASB even held an end of year club rush to help them get connected to an activity that will enhance their LVLS experience. It was a great event filled with food, music, and student demonstrations. In conclusion, the La Sierra Adult Transition Program is hosting a career and resource fair in the La Vista La Sierra Quad this Thursday. Over 40 vendors will be showcasing the programs, education, options, and activities that students can choose from once they complete ATP. The event starts at 6 o'clock, and you're all invited to attend. Thank you, and that concludes the La Vista La Sierra report. Thank you, Ms. Leona. President Klatsker. Um, I just have one really quick question is for Dr. Berg. You mentioned young children can show up dressed in princess outfits. I'm wondering if that extends there's to a, adults. There's not an age restriction on that, Dr. Berg. If I can trade this in for a wand, can I show up in a princess outfit? Okay, just checking. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so tonight um, I'm very excited because we're back to having full houses of students and their families that we get to uh, recognize and honor. And tonight we will be doing that for some of our artists 
and um, as well as our athletes. So I'd like to invite Dr. Zener to the podium to start our recognitions of our district visual and performing arts programs and winter athletic teams that competed in CIF. And if, if I may, President Klasker, Dr. Zener, just as far as, um, as we do these recognitions, uh, President Klasker and I are going to come up and we're going to receive some awards, but we also want to be sensitive. So we are handshakers. If you're not, that's okay. We can be fist bumpers or you can be waivers. Um, but it's your choice as you pass by. I just want to give people that option. But we do want to make sure we recognize everybody and we'll take a big group picture. Fantastic. Thank you, President Klasker, members of the board, and Dr. McLaughlin. This evening, we're very excited to recognize the district art show winners and also our fantastic district athletic teams who did phenomenally well in the CIF playoffs. I would like to ask District Visual and Performing Arts Committee Chairperson Laura Rubio, as well as Vapatosa Maggie Crail, to come to the podium to start the presentations. The students who, who participated in the district art show will receive a certificate of recognition from the Board of Trustees and a monetary award. In addition, the students will receive a certificate of recognition from the Office of Assemblywoman Sharon Quirk Silva. Oh, perfect. Good evening, everyone. Really, I am here to introduce uh, Ms. Maggie Crail, but I am truly honored to help represent the Visual and Performing Arts Curriculum Committee. This has been an amazing team to be a part of, and I am happy to continue to support them, and I'm excited about the events and activities to come. But my support doesn't compare to the amazing job that the fabulous Miss Maggie Crail has done to push our team to the next level and bring in a lot more resources and notoriety to our program. So it's been a blessing to have her on board. And here to present tonight's winners is the amazing Mrs. Crail. <laughs> Thank you. I wanted to start the evening by thanking our teachers who really pour their hearts and souls into the programs. I wanted to thank our community. We had two judges, Marsha Judd from the Muckenthaler and Elizabeth Holster from Cal State University of Fullerton. And all these people work together to really provide high quality programs for our students to excel. I also wanted to thank the parents because without them, your artists can't produce. And so you guys give the up of your time and your resources to really um, uh, help your students perform at high levels. So for the teachers, I wanted to thank Marjorie Brown from Buena Park High School, Jason Hess from Fullerton High School, uh, Anna Sanders from La Habra, Fernando Perez from Sonora, Brian Wall from Sunny Hills, and Mike Thomas from Troy High School. So now can we get all the painting winners up over here, please? Some students were unable to attend, but I will be calling out everyone's names. So our first place winner is Don He Kim for Star Stare. Yes. Do you wanna... Second place winner, Aaron Wu for Untitled. We had a third place winner, Ashley Huang for Hope. Honorable mention, Chloe Lim for Casualty of War. Honorable mention, Ivy Yao for Letting Go. Honorable mention, Ellie Park for Delicate. Honorable mention, Juliana Gerlin, Do You See Me? And honorable mention, Chloe Lim for sense, Senses. Now can we, do we, does anybody want to take any pictures? Do we all get pictures? Okay, perfect. Oh, wonderful. Okay. And then now can we get the drawing winners? Ready. Ready. Okay. <laughs> First place, Jasmine Zhang, Clockwork. <laughs> Second place, Sophia Kim, Smell Away. Third place, Patricia Hordista, Affliction. Honorable mention, Jasmine Zhang, Still Life Fantasy. Gosh. Honorable mention, Jackson Nichols, Endless. Wow. Honorable mention, Hannah Yaros, Color of the Wind. Wow. 
Honorable Mention, Ali Kim, Rainfall, Rendezvous. <laughs> Honorable Mention, Stella Rodella, Pieces of Me. <laughs> and then Honorable Mention, Sophia Kim, Exodus of the Edge. Yes. <laughs> so now we have oh, you, the 3D kids. So 3D design. First place, Ariana Abel for Mansion. Second place, Evan Iniguez for Self Portrait. Third place, Caitlin Kanishni for Memories of My Aunt. And then honorable mention, Clarissa Zamora, Moments in Time. Yes. And now we have photography. First place, Skylar Bush, Through the Looking Glass. Second place, Justin Chavez, Distorted Balance. Third place, Sierra Campos, Falling. Honorable mention, Isabella Dene, Angels. Honorable mention, Alexis Cuevas, Joyride. And then honorable mention, Catherine Padilla, Capturing Flight and Light. And now for our 2D design. First place, Samantha Hernandez, Knowledge. Second place, Ivy Yao, Culture. Third place, Sharon Sung, Bulgay. And here are this year's winners for the District Art Show. Now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. As, as we transition to athletics, just want to uh, remind all of our art folks, we are going to be doing more and more displays like you see over here. Yeah. We're going to have monthly art displays from all of our schools that will be rotating and really being able to showcase and highlight our great artists. So thank you for being here tonight. As we transition from arts to athletics, I would like to ask 
our principal from Sonora and our Freeway League president, Marvin Ask Atkins, to come to the podium to start presentations on our athletic teams. Mr. Atkins. All right, thank you, Dr. Zener, and I really appreciate it. It is my honor to bring forth three schools for CIF winter sports seasons. Our ADs will introduce the sports teams. Our ADs work so tirelessly all throughout the school year, many of them coaching plus their AD responsibilities. First school to introduce and their athletes will be Joseph Olivas with Fullerton Union High School. Thank you for having us here today. Um, I would first like to introduce uh, my head wrestling coach, uh, Matt Fregoso. Come on up, coach. This is uh, Coach Fregoso's second year at Fullerton, and he's done an amazing job turning around our wrestling program, uh, building it up and creating a sense of family within the program. Uh, he has two young men with him here today. The first one is Nathan Diaz. Nathan had a record of 23-3 with 23 pins. He was second in the Brea tournament, first in the Corona Del Mar tournament. He was first at the Western tournament, freeway league champion, CIF individual champion, and it was the first one in 19 years at Fullerton High School, so we're very proud of him. Come on up, Nathan. He's a little shy. Our second wrestler up is a young man who I just love, and I've coached with him in another sport. Um, you look at him, and he's a, he's a big, brawny, tough guy, but I'm telling you, he's one of the sweetest humans you'll ever meet. He's a great representative of our school and our school district. His name is Levi Benuelos. <laughs> Levi uh, finished second at the Costa Mesa tournament first at the Corona Del Mar tournament, third at the Brea tournament, second at the Western tournament. He's a freeway league champ, CIF uh, individual placed fifth, and he was a CIF masters, a place of eighth, and he qualified for state wrestling. This is our wrestling team. Our second team for the winter that I'd like to bring up is our boys basketball team led by our head coach, Eric Kamrath. Coach, you want to come on up? If you came to any of our games this year, you would have seen some very tough matches within our league. Our team finished third in league, and yet we went to the CIF finals for Division IV AA. Uh, coach Kamrath and his boys hit their mark at the end of the season, really pulling together, and we went into some tough environments, including the CIF final, at a very tough old-school match. Uh, coach Kamrath has led his boys, turning around his uh, program in a very short amount of time since we brought him on, and he's been nothing but great, uh, done great stuff for us here at Fullerton. Our first player we would like to bring up is Ezekiel Yelsing, <laughs> senior. He had honorable mention in the Freeway League, and he was also, this very, very important one here, he was a 2022 Orange County Athletic Director's Athlete of Character Award winner. Our next, our next player up is Zane Mustafa, senior, first team all league. He's been a great uh, help and a great representative of our program while he's been here at Fullerton and a big part of why we made it to the finals. Our next up, uh, young man up is a legacy here at Fullerton a very well-known family in the city and at the school, well-respected, and he's just hes just a great kid if you get to know him and his family. He is a Christian Hubbard. He's a junior, first team all freeway league, first team uh, all CIF, and second team all Orange County. Our last person up is Josiah Reed. 
Junior, Second Team All Freeway League, and Second Team All CIF Division Four AA. This is our basketball team. Next, we are going to bring forth um, Mr. Frank McCarroll, uh, Athletic Director at La Havre High School, who will be introducing the cheer team. Do you mind if I take this off? Good evening. Friday Night Lights. Is that a term you're familiar with by any chance? Friday Night Lights? Yeah. Well, we at La Habra have been pretty fortunate for the past 20 plus years. Then on Friday nights, football games are pretty special events. Not only what's happening on the gridiron itself, but the support from other groups, whether it be our band, which has grown immensely in the past 20 years, their pregame, their halftime shows, just incredible. But there's a third group that, for some of us who are, maybe I'm dating myself, the pep squad, right? The spirit team. But no, our cheer team, these young ladies and young men have been working as hard as any team you want to imagine. Notice I said team, right? Not squad, but team. 55, 60 young high school students um, I, I, I coached basketball, I used to coach basketball, and, and we'd be done some nights at 7.30, 8 o'clock for practice, and I'm going home, and Senior Park, under the lights, the mats are out, and here's Coach Marisi with her team working hard, as hard as any team on our campus. About five years ago, CIF said, cheer is now an official sport, which means you get to compete. Up until then, we would hear stories of their successes, their weekend tournaments, their national events, and so on, and get a flag once in a while, which was awesome to put in the front, in the main office. But with CIF, now we have plaques, now we have trophies, now we have awards. And in the past five years, since the start of CIF competition for our competition cheer team, they've been competing in the CIF finals. And it's through the leadership of our, our head coach, Coach Allison Marisi over there. And she's brought a couple of guests, two of her captains, uh, Unique Tellis and Isabella Rodriguez. And Coach, do you want to talk a little bit about all the things you've done in your short time? Oh, by the way, uh, the best part is Allison's a Haber grad, right? We always like to brag about our students. So Coach Marisi, you want to talk a little bit? All right. Hello everyone. Thank you all so much for having us here tonight. It has definitely been a long road for cheer teams in California going through the process of becoming an official CIF sport. So it means a lot, not just to me, but to our kids in the program to be recognized tonight along with other sports. For our CIF wins, our CIF state runner up, our back to back national championships and many things in between. Tonight I have with me two of my captains who are finishing out their senior year, Unique Tellez and Isabella Sanchez, who have been with us since our very first CIF competition and have helped me shape this program into what it is today. I would also like to thank our athletic director, Frank McCarroll, who has always supported us from the beginning, and many of our admin past who are here and present who have supported me not just in high school, because I came right from this program into coaching it, so it's really great to have that support continue through high school into coaching. Thank you, guys.
Thank you very much. So we have Isabella and Unique. And our third captain, uh, Tessia, could make it this evening. So uh, these are three senior leaders that uh, have been with the program since her freshman year and have been a big part of that uh, CIF success we're so proud of. Congratulations, ladies. Oh, I don't want to ruin it. Last but certainly not least is Sunny Hills High School and their athletic director, Mr. Paul Jones. All right, hello, I'm uh, Paul Jones, Sunny Hills athletic director. And uh, tonight we are going to recognize our CIF championship uh, boys soccer team. Come on up guys. So representing our soccer team are our team captains, Michael Franco, David Resco, and Jerry Mejia. Our captains did an outstanding job of leading our team this year. The Lancer Varsity Boys Soccer Team finished their season in the semifinals of the Southern California Regionals, which is basically state, uh, after winning the CIF Southern Section Championship, beating Norte Vista, one to zero. The team made a great CIF run by winning three overtime games, allowing two goals against, and they scored eight goals. In their run, the Lancers defeated Canyon 2-0, Santiago 2-0, and Palmdale 2-1. And the number one seed, Valley View, 2-1 uh, in an incredible overtime game with an awesome goal. Along with the CIF Southern section, Sectional Championship, the Lancers were Freeway League co-champs. Their league record was an impressive 9-1, and, and overall they were 19-4-4. Four four. Now, Coach Shady, he's the, uh, the Lancers are coached by legendary uh, Coach Mike Shady. Coach Shady has been a part of the Lancer staff investing in the program since the 80s. So I, I found out he started coaching when I was born. <laughs> 84 was a great year. He was an assistant in the boys soccer program in 1987, which was the Lancers' first CIF championship. And as the head coach, the Lancers were finalists in 1998 and also 2018. The Lancers returned to the finals and won, and they won CIF in 2016 and again this year in 2022. Overall, Coach Shady has 300 wins and 13 freeway league championships and over uh, over 300 wins. So congratulations, Coach Shady and the boys soccer team. CIF champs. Next, we have Lancer Wrestling, coached by Davis Barr. Up first, we have Jenna Park, who had a phenomenal year as a wrestler for the Lancers. Jenna placed seventh at the Dick Morris Memorial Tournament. She placed sixth at the Santa Ana Ladies Saints Tournament. She was 5-0 and in the Freeway League champion. She finished fourth in CIF and Few really understand how tough it is to be a wrestler, especially a female wrestler, and Jenna did a phenomenal job. Uh, it takes a lot of toughness, grit, and time, and hours, and so Jenna did an awesome job this year, and she finished fourth in CIF. Coming down... 
Next, we have Kylie Yang. She had one of the best seasons as a wrestler in Lancer history. Kylie was 5-0 and in freeway league duels, so she was also a freeway league champion. She placed fourth at the Dick Morris Memorial Tournament. She placed third at the Santa Ana Lady Saints Tournament. And she earned sixth place, sixth place in CIF, which qualified her for Masters. Uh, she, as she qualified for Masters, uh, she wrestled so well, she also qualified for state. So qualifying for Masters is a tough feat in itself, but also then qualifying for state is huge. So she did an incredible job. She finished the year as one of the top 16 female wrestlers in the state of California at 126 pounds. Davis, Jenna, and Kylie, congratulations on a historic season. President Klatsker, Dr. McLaughlin, board, thank you so much. That concludes our commendations and recognitions. Let's give everybody one more round of applause. That was like a marathon. That was awesome. Okay, so moving on to our next item on the agenda is timely information from the board or superintendent. So at this time, I'd like to call Dr. Atkinson to the podium to introduce three new administrators so we can finally stop saying pending board approval, Craig <laughs> Weinrich. Thank you, President Klatsker. Members of the board, Dr. McLaughlin, I do have the pleasure this evening of, of introducing three new administrators to our district, and I would like to begin by calling Brian Cuevas to join me at the podium. Brian has been with the district since uh, 2012. He has served as head counselor at La Sierra High School since 2012, and actually also served as adjunct counselor at Fullerton College from 2017 to 2021. Uh, in 2021, 2022, uh, Brian was uh, promoted to the position of student intervention liaison at La Sierra and La Vista High Schools. And most recently, at the beginning of the 2022 year, uh, Brian was promoted and asked to serve as interim assistant principal at initially Sunny Hills High School. We'll, spend, we'll be spending some time at La Habra High School as well. And he's currently wearing a few hats. He's still providing support to La Vista and La Sierra High Schools. So we're very uh, appreciative of the work that you're doing, Brian, and your willingness to step in and be a part of the administrative team with us. Uh, do you have anyone in attendance with you this evening? My would, wife, no. Would you like to in introduce them? First, I want to say thank you to uh, President Klasker, Dr. McLaughlin, and board members. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, great opportunity to continue to grow as a leader. Also to um, support our um, families, not only at Sunny Hills, La Habra, but continue supporting our families at La Vista, La Sierra. And then a big thank you to my wife, Laura, who's at home taking care of our soon-to-be 10-month-old baby. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Next, I'd like to call Craig Weinrich to the podium. We've heard a lot about Craig this evening. I will not say pending board approval. So we, uh, we are very fortunate to have Craig uh, become principal of Sunny Hills High School. Uh, Craig has a long history with Sunny Hills High School, also a long history in the district. He's a graduate of Troy High School. So he's a homegrown administrator, educator. Uh, he began his career at Sunny Hills High School in 1999 as an English and social science teacher. Uh, he coached basketball. He was a girls' varsity basketball coach for 12 years. 
12 years. He also served at, as boys baseball and basketball uh, coach at the lower levels and, and uh, as an assistant athletic director for five years. Uh, he has served as an assistant principal throughout the district. Uh, he served uh, at Sunny Hills High School and uh, also moved over to La Habra High School. You've been at Fullerton. Anyone I've forgotten? <laughs> So he served at uh, several of the schools within our district as an assistant principal, and he is returning to Sunny Hills now to become principal. Is there anyone with you this evening that you'd like to introduce? Thank you, Dr. Atkinson. First off, uh, good evening, and thank you, Board President Klatsker, uh, members of the board, and uh, Dr. McLaughlin. Um, I'm honored to be given this opportunity to serve as principal uh, of Sunny Hills High School. Uh, this amazing school and community have been my home for uh, upwards of pushing 23 years, except for the, the past couple of years right here. Uh, I'm excited to continue the tradition of excellence that we have at, the, at Sunny Hills and uh, looking forward to this opportunity. So thank you guys again for that. I do have in, in attendance, I have my family here, so I want to introduce my lovely wife, Nicole. You guys can stand up. Come on, you can stand up. <laughs> and then I have my uh, two sons, uh, Luke and Liam, who are also Sunny Hills students right now. So that'll be fun. And my mom, Cindy, is also here in attendance as well. So you know, everybody got the family. So. Again, thank you guys very much. Appreciate the opportunity. And last but certainly not least, I would like to uh, welcome Ted Wallstrom. Ask him to join me at the podium. Ted is uh, our most recent addition to the administrative team. Ted is will be serving as Director of Facilities, Maintenance, and Operation. Ted comes to us from uh, East Whittier uh, City School District, where he uh, has served as, most recently, the Interim Assistant Superintendent Business Services, but uh, since 2020, the Director of Bonds, Facilities, and Modernization. Prior to his time in East Whittier City School District, uh, Ted served as the Director of Facilities, Planning, and Risk Management in the Merced Unified High School District, and that was from 2010 to 2020. From two 2003 to 2010, uh, Ted served as Project Superintendent Construction Manager with Greg Opinski Construction. We're very fortunate to have him. He has a long and diverse uh, background and experience that is going to serve us very well. Uh, so I'd like to welcome you. Would you like to say a few words? Sure. Dr. McLaughlin and Board President Klatsner, thank you very much for the opportunity. I plan to uh, take the baton from, from Mr. Butcher and just keep continuing carrying it. Really excited with the work that has been performed already with Measure I and just plan to continue that success with this department. And that concludes my introductions. Thank you, Dr. Atkinson, and welcome to all three of our new team members. Uh, do any board members have any information they'd like to share? Dr. McLaughlin? Yeah, thank you, President Klatsker, members of the board, and home and in the audience. Uh, just to get, let everybody in on the inside joke of pending board approval, um, why we do that is, is really it's an official act by the board tonight for consideration are these leaders. Um, but by uh, allowing us to announce Mr. Weinrich as the inter or soon to be or pending uh, principal allows some trans. Um, um, uh, what am I looking for? Crossover time, thank you. Uh, crossover time so that he can, can become prepared. It also allows us to to let the community know who's coming and, and get ready for the transition. So it's been wonderful, and we appreciate that that opportunity. And welcome to the new leaders in your position. We're excited to have you. Uh, it, take it from me. It's a fantastic district, and Craig knows as well as anyone. So welcome to the family. Um, Grace, you stole my thunder. It's seven weeks and two days uh, till graduation, because uh, I count. Uh, I'm counting down to the, the opportunities we have left with our students before they leave and you're counting down till you leave um, <laughs> you don't want to leave um, but it's really exciting time uh, getting to the end of the year um, we are gearing up for our next newsletter which is so much to celebrate and you've seen it tonight uh, with all of our amazing athletes uh, our art um, distinguished award winners and we'll be back next uh, month to, to recognize many of our employees um, one group that we did get a chance to recognize this month are assistant principals it was assistant principal appreciation week um, and up until this year I didn't know we had one 
um, to be honest, but it, we recognize them in so many different ways, but what a great way to publicly acknowledge our system principals who are really unsung heroes a lot of times in our school districts. They do so much work behind the scenes in supporting our students and our staff and putting things together. So just wanted to recognize them tonight and their good work. I, I got the chance to work with them in a leadership uh, meeting, uh, I guess it was last week, and, uh, and really spent some time. And we have some exceptional leaders at that level. Um, as far as uh, what's coming up for us, Friday is a non-student day, uh, which means that we learn a lot in this district. And I just want to take a moment to thank our, our principals and our leadership teams at our sites for preparing a, a really impressive day uh, for our staffs to learn together and really cast the vision moving forward. Um, we've done a lot of work as a team uh, talking about calibrating, talking about uh, really uh, working with our site teams and getting input, and, and really kind of showcasing where we're going. And so uh, I'm excited to come around and visit all the sites, uh, but it's really a learning day. So as the families at home, we appreciate you taking care of uh, the students when they're not with us um, so that we can have the chance to learn together. So that's going to be a big day on the 15th. Um, and then uh, really uh, just want to compliment a, a couple of uh, uh, people here on, on Cabinet and uh, Dr. Kaufman and her Ed Services team. We launched a, a new logo for them and her team spent months uh, and it's called Set for Success. Um, so we're, we are supporting, uh, we are equipping, and we are teaching in our Ed Services team. And that enables us to really brand a vision coming out of Ed Services, create a, a really robust professional development plan, which we're excited about for next year, um, and, and really uh, showcase uh, all the various things that, that are going on in the district. So I really appreciate Dr. Kaufman's leadership there. Um, and then I do want to uh, compliment as well um, Mr. Atkinson and Mr. Hernandez, and especially the principals. We've been going through a lot uh, in the last couple months with respects to staffing uh, and budget planning for next year, and happy to say uh, that we're able to to start uh, releasing some of those uh, uh, staffing uh, job postings into the universe so we can start to recruit early uh, in this process or earlier. So it took a lot of work on behalf of that team as well as our site administrator. So I really appreciate that. So we're, we're geared up and ready to go for next year. Uh, but Grace, we have seven weeks and two days on this year. Um, so we'll be able to celebrate on our way out. But I just want everybody to know uh, uh, that we're already in preparation for uh, what's to come uh, opening and, and appreciate the leaders in the district for that. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. McLaughlin. All right, moving on to updates. Um, I, we're going to get some updates from our employee associations. So I'd like to invite FSTO President Angie Sankak to the podium to give an update. Good evening, President Klatsker, members of the Board of Trustees, Dr. McLaughlin, and our administrators. Our FSTO members continue to be busy at work this spring semester as we begin to look forward to another school year coming to an end and our upcoming summer break. Thank you, Grace. I will remember that. <laughs> For some of our members, though, summer break tends to be a bit shorter as many of them will opt to work during our summer weeks, which is a benefit for all. FSTO is offering a scholarship opportunity to our current FJUHSD senior students who are planning to major in education during their college years. Students can choose to major in a career as a classroom teacher, guidance counselor, school nurse, school psychologist, or librarian. FSTO awards six $500 scholarships annually, and the application process will close this Friday, April 15th. Our district counselors have been given the information to share with their students, and thanks to Dr. McLaughlin, the information was also distributed in his April newsletter. We look forward to announcing the grant recipients during next month's Board of Trustees meeting. Our negotiating team continues to work on a successor agreement to our current collective bargaining agreement, which is set to expire on June 30th, 2022. Both FSTO and the district's teams are confident that an agreement will be reached prior to the June 30th date, and we, are all, and we are all hoping to have the contract settled before our members leave for summer break. I believe that would be a first in many, many years. <laughs> um, thank you, Dr. Atkinson, and to your team for the professionalism, collegiality, collegiality and patience that you have shown during our latest negotiation process. It's been a pleasure working on our successor agreement and we look forward to continuing and completing this work together and soon. FSTO recently completed its elections for two open board seats beginning June 1st, 2022 and one open site representative seat that needed to be filled immediately. Amanda Geezer was elected to begin serving as site representative for La Vista La Sierra and she joined us earlier today for our executive board meeting her first of many as site rep. 
Amanda will also step into the role of vice president on June 1st, and Magdalena Vialba has been elected to serve as FSTO secretary. Each office holds a three-year term, and we congratulate both of them for their hard work and dedication to our organization. And lastly, congratulations to Principal Weinrich. Um, Sunny Hill certainly chose well, and we look forward to working with you too. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. I'd like to now invite CSEA President Joe Slyker to the podium to give an update. Good evening, uh, Dr. McLaughlin, President Klatsker, and members of the board. What is this summer break you guys keep talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, as classified employees, we uh, we work year round. So, but uh, but I get it. It's an exciting time for for our teachers and and, and students. So. Um, uh, it's great seeing everybody's faces. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story. I, I don't come up to the district office very often because there's no swimming pool here. But <laughs> I, I did have a meeting with, with our superintendent recently and, and going through the office and after we had our meeting, I walked back out and Mrs. Harder said, Joe, is that you? <laughs> Can I help you? Yeah, because I've had this hair on my face for about a year now, but I have been wearing a mask for the last two years. So. <laughs> That was funny. The, uh, uh, I wanted to say congratulations to Mr. Ryan, which uh, uh, two things I wanted to say to you was, one, the classified staff at Sunny Hills are really excited to see you come up there, and the Sunny and the La Habra staff is really excited to see you go. And that's really all I need to know about you. So congratulations. Um, and then I wanted to speak to our negotiations. So we are also negotiating with the district. And I've been here a long time. Um, and been through a lot of negotiating sessions. And I want to tell you that this negotiating session has been the most cooperative in my history of being at the school district. And that's a direct reflection on Dr. Atkinson and our superintendent. And I just want to acknowledge you folks for that. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Slyker. Um, for our PTA update, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Harder to read the update. <laughs> I don't really have a microphone. Um, yes, this report is from the Fullerton Council PTA. They couldn't be here tonight, but asked me to read this. So this is what they said. On March 29th, we held our elections of our executive board. Our elected members are President is an open spot, Executive Vice President Christy Carter, Secretary Nevi Nevi. Harwar, Harwar, I'm sorry, butchered it. Tre Treasurer is Sarah Budicheski. VP of membership is Lisa Sherman. Auditor, Lisa Jewell. Historian, Jody Frausto. On March 30th, Fullerton Council was well represented at the 4th District PTA's administrative dinner. We were recognized for being the council closest to having every single principal in attendance. Hermosa Elementary was recognized with an honorable, honorable mention for the Creative Program Award. Our scholarship community has reviewed the scholarship applications and will be reaching out to our recipients this week. We are looking forward to our end of the year luncheon happening on Tuesday, April 26. This concludes their update. Thank you, Mrs. Harder. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have a quick recess so everybody can take a break and escape if you're in that category while well, you can.
You guys get so quiet so quickly. Okay, at this time, we will call for public comments for items that are not on the agenda. Individuals who filled out a speaker request form will be invited to the podium when their name is read. Public comments are limited to three minutes per person and 30 minutes per topic. So our first person tonight is Gail Smith. Hello, I'm, I'm Gail Smith with, oh, oops, excuse me, um, with the Assistance League in Fullerton. And this is Susan Schilling, our, um, our president. So we were asked to come and speak to one of your uh, board agenda items. It was the um, donation of hygiene items to each one of the schools to be used by your very needy students. So um, I wanted just to tell you a little bit about the Assistance League. We've been around for 82 years and not Susan and I, but, <laughs> um, and we, our main philanthropy is giving clothes to students so that they can come to school. And we used to do it in our uh, dressing rooms in this little building, uh, but now we do it in um, Target. We take the students to Target and we get, let them uh, spend uh, $125 for clothes and uh, hygiene items and school supplies. So last year we were able to dress and, and have 265 of your students come to the Target events. And they are delightful. They are happy, they are uh, enjoying getting some free stuff, and they get the things that they need. So we, that's what we are really enjoying, that's great. Um, we were able to do 1,500 students in this area, but those mostly elementary as well this year. So we, uh, when the last time we had a Target event, we had the students decide that they liked a lot of hygiene items. And in, after that, your liaison, Stephanie uh, Grigogoff, I'm not sure about that name, um, she was able to convince us that we needed to help. We, so we're now in partnership with you and there's a closet or a shelf or something in every one of your schools that has supplies that we have provided that the students can use, especially the needy, the homeless, the students that are really in, could use that. So we will continue to do that for the next year. We will continue to work on the supplies. And our liaison in our uh, organization is Ellie Westenhaver, but she wasn't able to be here tonight, but she has, manage this whole program. Lots of supplies, building them all together and then taking them over to you. So we are very proud of this new partnership and we're glad to be here. I also wanted to say we love seeing all your students, the academics, the artists, the, the uh, athletes, it was really fun. So thank you very much. We're happy to be in this partnership. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Kristen Hubbard. Hi, good evening. Um, you probably wonder why did you stick around? <laughs> um, but I think it's important, so I'm here. Um, I've had the pleasure of seeing some of you um, over the last few days, weeks, in celebration of some amazing students lately. At first at Fullerton's Top 100 and now celebrating um, this amazing run of Fullerton basketball and my son being one of those kiddos in both. So why am I here making a public comment? Um, I, I should just be enjoying these achievements, right? Well, there's a bill that I don't know if you've heard about. It's a proposed bill that would add COVID vaccine to the list of required immunizations for both public and private school attendance while repealing any exemptions for personal belief. And the name of the bill is SB 871. So fast forward January 2023, if SB 871 passes, none of these celebrations happen for my son or others like him. I promised I wasn't gonna cry, sorry. <laughs> um, basketball is taken from him. No honor of top 100. In fact, he's stripped of the joy of graduating with all of his friends. All of this because we choose not to risk 
any of the long-term health conditions from COVID vaccine like myocarditis or pericarditis, especially not for virus he's actually already had. SB 871 would rob children of their right to education. Families who wanted to choose to vaccinate their children have already done so. So families who have decided that this vaccine has too many risks with no data of long-term effects have chosen not to vaccinate. These children would be discriminated against and denied their constitutional right to free public education. So while pharmaceutical companies list the risks of their vaccine as rare, I would confidently argue that the risk is too great. These amazing teens are worthy of the right to choose whether or not they want to risk their health for a vaccine that statistically harms more than it helps kids of their age. Please do not close the door to my son's future. Please contact our state legislators and add your powerful voices in standing up in opposition to SB 871. So please speak up for kids like, like my son. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kristen. Um, I'd like to thank you for your thoughtful comments. Uh, Non-agenda items may not be acted on during the meeting or discussed by the board. If you'd like further information, please contact us through the district website or contact staff members. We'll be happy to talk with you and follow up. Okay, next is uh, reports. And the first thing on there is resolutions 2122, number 32 and 33, order of biennial trustee election and specifications of the election order for Orange County and Los Angeles County. All right. There's a lot to read, so bear with me, please. A consolidated election is required to be held in the district this year. It will be held on Tuesday, November 8th, 2022, for members of the governing board in accordance with Education Code Section 5340, which reads in part, school district governing board or community college district governing board member elections for two or more school districts of any type to be held in the same district or area on the same day shall be consolidated so that a person entitled to, to vote in both or all of such elections may do so at the same time and place using the same ballot. Because FJUHSD serves students in both Orange County and Los Angeles County, it is necessary that a resolution for a consolidated election be submitted to both counties. Is there a motion to approve the resolution 2122 number 32 order of biennial trustee election and specifications of the election order for Orange County? I move. Thank Chester. you, Joe. Thank you, Chester. You beat me to it. Thank you. <laughs> Do board members have any questions? Okay. Grace, would you like to cast a preferential vote? I approve. Thank you. Um, board members, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Is there a motion to approve the resolution 2122 number 33 order of biennial trustee election and specifications of the election order for Los Angeles County? I move. Thank yes, you, Joanne. Move. Thank you, Chester. Do board members have any questions? Grace, you're up. Would you like to cast a preferential vote? I approve. Thank you. Uh, board members, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, next on the agenda is uh, Ethnic Studies Pilot Course Update, and I'd like to invite Super Assistant Superintendent of Education and Assessment Services, Dr. Sylvia Kaufman, to the podium to give an update on the Ethnic Studies Pilot Course. President Klatsker, members of the board and guests, we are here this evening with our third update on the progress of the Ethnic Studies course that a committee of teachers, parents, students, and administrators have been designing for the Fullerton Joint Union High School District. We believe this course is important for a better understanding of our community around us. As board members may recall, we presented on May 20, uh, 2021, and at this public meeting, we provided information on the recent adoption of the State Board of Education model curriculum for ethnic studies. Then, on November 2021, we presented our district committee members and gave an update on the committee's collective work for which included four selected ethnic groups to focus on and five themes to be covered in each unit, in addition 
included the introduction unit of study, four units each based on an ethnic group, and a fifth unit that provided flexibility through a student choice research project and, most importantly, established guiding principles. To, in, to ensure we included the voices of our community, the committee read all the public input from the May 2021 board meeting. Next, the committee agreed on the five core values that serve as the guiding principles. They are as follows. Cultural celebration, cultural sensitivity, cultural awareness, cultural understanding, and cultural unity. The committee used these five guiding principles to drive every step of the curriculum development. For example, the committee members asked how the topics and or resources connected back to these guiding principles in each step of the process, especially with the focus on cultural celebration as the top priority. As shared in the last board update in November, one topic the committee discussed early on was the difference between a U.S. history course and an ethnic studies course. A U.S. history course is a broad survey course. Ethnic studies is a course that offers a thematic, deeper examination of specific ethnic groups, such as the four groups we have chosen to focus on, Latin Americans, Native Americans, African Americans, and Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. In addition, at the last presentation in November of 2021, it was shared that ethnic studies is not critical race theory. As you can see in this side-by-side -side comparison, ethnic studies will constructively trace the historical journey of ethnic groups and celebrate their achievements and their accomplishments. Critical race theory believes that racism is not merely the product of individual bias or prejudice, but also embedded in legal systems and policies. At this time, I'd like to introduce our teacher on special assignment, also known as our TOSA, Sharon Holland, who has been leading and facilitating our Ethnic Studies Committee through this process. Thanks. Um, good evening. I'm pleased to be here to represent the teachers of the committee. They've been hard at work for almost a year now, and on these next two slides, you will see that the committee has accomplished what the committee has accomplished since we last updated you in November. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so in December, representatives from the Ethnic Studies Curriculum Committee presented information on the course to our ASB student leaders from every campus during their monthly student advisory council meeting. Students were encouraged to take the information back to their campuses and our student Board member Grace Lee was in attendance that day. Also during December, the committee continued to work on finalizing our course outline. We drafted and discussed the culminating research report for the final student choice unit. After a break, we came back in January and committee members met with the lead counselors from all campuses to introduce them to the course in preparation for student registration. Um, gratefully, the administrative cabinet approved the draft course outline for ethnic studies in January, which allowed counselors from each campus to apply for A through G course credit through UC doorways. Also in January, the committee welcomed three new members. The student board member who joined us as the voice for all of, uh, to represent all of FJUHSD students was Grace Lee. She performs on our committee much as she does here with you. We also welcomed two parent representatives, Sophia Mehta from uh, the La Habra Council PTA and Helen Karat from the Fullerton Council PTA. We are very grateful for their input. In February, the committee finalized the course outline and discussed opening the opening unit for the course, which will establish foundational skills needed for success, such as evaluating the credibility of sources, 
establishing a common vocabulary of key terms for use throughout the course, and understanding the difference between discussion and debate as we continue with many discussions throughout the course. Also in February, student registration began on each campus um, throughout the district. In March, we were pleased to receive A through G approval for every school from the UC system for our new ethnic studies course. And also in March, committee members continued their work by gathering and identifying resources for teachers to use when teaching this course beginning in the fall. This is essential because we will not be adopting an official textbook during the pilot phase of the course. So these resources are an important part of what teachers will use in instruction. Um, in April, just very recently, um, I met with, teach with the teachers on special assignment for both special education and English learners in order to discuss instructional strategies and techniques that ensure that the success of any student who seeks to enroll in the course. And also in April, um, the committee teacher teams met with the student representative and parents on the committee to share the teaching resources that we had gathered. As to our future steps for this, um, in April and May, we will have professional learning meetings led by the committee members who created the course outline and located the resources. These professional learning meetings will be for the teachers identified to teach the course and um, will focus on the units, especially for fall semester, to get the course up and running. The schools listed here that you can see are offering the course because they had sufficient student registration numbers, typically around 20 students, um, but not fewer than 20. This course will be offered during the instructional day, periods one through six, to ensure access for all students during this two-year pilot period. Over the summer, the teachers identified to teach the course will continue to create and refine lessons and units for use when the course begins in August. And when the official pilot course begins in the fall, teachers will continue to meet and evaluate the effectiveness of the course and materials and to continue developing new units and lessons for use in second semester. This has been a truly thoughtful process and I and all of the committee members are very proud of the product that we have created. As a reminder, students interested in enrolling may still do so by seeing their school counselors. And let's not forget our strong partnership with Fullerton College, and we will be offering ethnic studies as we have the past several years. And so that's an option for students who may not be able to take it during the instructional day, which is periods one through six. Uh, once again, we would like to thank our committee members for all their hard work that they continue to put in day in and day out because this will be an ongoing process throughout our two-year pilot process. And at this time, we welcome any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I really appreciate the continual connecting back to the guiding principles, whether it's the units being developed, the resources, I love the inclusion of our own Ms. Lee, as well as parents, and really focusing on this is a deeper dive into the contributions and history of many segments of our community that in a regular U.S. history class, this sounds terrible, but, you know, U.S. history keeps marching on, but the school year doesn't get any longer, so the time to teach each thing becomes shorter and shorter, and things tend to get skipped, and this way we can infuse that back into through an elective program so people can get a richer, more complete view of U.S. history. So thank you very much for all of the work on this. It is extremely challenging to launch a new course, and I'm incredibly grateful for everyone's work. Thank you. Um, if I could just add to that really quickly, I really appreciate the work that you guys did working with all of the stakeholder groups. I think that's really important, and it, it makes this process um, so accessible to everyone and it takes all of the questions out of it that community members, parents, students might have regarding what ethnic studies is and what is going to be taught in the class. So I really appreciate that you guys involved a lot of different people in that process. Um, 
I have two questions for you. The first one is, and I feel like you told me before, so I'm gonna ask for a reminder, how the teachers were identified that were going to be teaching it. And then you talked about evaluating effectiveness, and I'm just wondering what, how that's going to be measured. So as you work, because this is all pilot and it's a work in progress, so I'm just curious as to what that evaluative process looks like. So the teachers were identified by the site principals as the um, potential instructors for the course before we ever established our committee. So much of our committee um, was invested in what we were doing because they were potentially going to be teaching the course. Now, not all of the committee members end up being the teachers teaching the course, but um, I'd say about half of them are. Um, and so the uh, site principals, based on their needs, their staffing, availability, um, are the ones who gave us the names of the teachers. Um, as for the effectiveness, um, because this is a pilot and we are using open source materials to teach the course, um, what we're gonna be doing is continuously meeting to just to write the lessons and the units as we um, meet, but also to reflect back on what worked, um, how it worked, why it worked, and then what changes we would make for the future. So at this point, it's, it's information gathering and reflection based on the experiences of the teacher and um, guiding them through the first year in that way. Thank you. It, it, just to expand on it, Dr. Copney, you want to talk a little bit about the learning and the, the meetings for next year and Absolutely. the work that happen? Under the leadership of Mrs. Holland, uh, we have the opportunity to, at least on a minimum, we've set up already, uh, at least on a monthly basis, where the teachers will have an opportunity to dialogue, to reflect. It'll be an ongoing cycle, learning process, and uh, gain, gaining input from students as well along the way. And that's the great thing about this being a pilot. They'll, there will be a lot of learning, a lot of reflection, and some things we may be pulling out, some things we may be pulling in, and so that'll be an ongoing conversation at minimum on a monthly basis. So we've already set up dates and established that, and Mrs. Holland already sent out emails to those teachers, so we're, we're ready to move forward. So just, just to expand on what Dr. Kaufman was saying, um, the units that we'll be using first semester, we have three dates set up between now and the end of the school year so that the teachers who will be teaching in the fall can work on the opening unit, can work on uh, the, the Latin American unit and the Native American unit. Um, looking at the resources that we've gathered and then working together to come up with common lessons and common assessments. So that will all happen before they leave for summer and then they have the summer to refine and um, and really organize what they'd like to do the first half of the school year. And we'll be doing the same thing when we come back in fall for second semester. If I can put Grace on the spot for a minute, your participation, you won't get to take the course, uh, but can you share a little bit of your experience and input along the way? Yeah, um, it was really interesting to attend the meeting and see how much work the teachers are putting in. Um, the document was full of so many resources that teachers can use, and I think students will really enjoy the multimedia aspect of it. It's not just your reading text. Um, students are watching videos or viewing pictures. Um, so I think from the student perspective, students really liked how it was, um, I guess, effective in all learning types. It wasn't just the visual learners that were going to um, take this course, but also all of the learning um, students. And yeah, it was really just great to provide student input. Um, and yeah, I really loved enjoying being part of the process. Thank you. My Erwin? <clears throat> when you look at the list of people uh, on the committee, it's impressive, and I feel very happy that, you know, the direction that you're moving in. So thank you for all the work that you've been doing. I do have a couple questions. Um, you mentioned resources that you've c uh, compiled. Will the teachers be able to move outside of the uh, approved resources for adding things, or will that be up to the committee to determine whether they can branch out? That would be one question that I have. So right now we're using the resources that the committee members have gathered. Um, they're gonna be presenting those resources, um, and the resources are tied directly to the course outline. So if the course outline says, this is what our objective is that students um, will be able to achieve, 
then these are the resources that teachers will use to help the students achieve that. Um, during that reflection period, or even in the meetings that we have between now and the end of the school year, if there are other things besides what's on that list that teachers want to bring in and, and talk about and discuss, we can bring those into the meetings um, when we're together. And um, always the guiding principles are going to be what we balance the resources against. That's good. A second question I have, uh, and this relates to a conversation I had with the superintendent some time ago. Uh, you mentioned that the four ethnic groups are the focus of the ethnic studies class. But uh, Dr. McLaughlin mentioned that there was one component of the course that allowed for the bringing in of other groups of people, uh, and you didn't mention that. I wonder if you could elaborate on that a little bit. Yes, um, so the fifth unit is what I'm calling it. It's the culminating activity for the course. So um, we have five themes that run through each of the four ethnic groups, and the four ethnic groups that we selected are the ones suggested by the State Board of Ed. Um, but we fully recognize from the very beginning that those are not all encompassing of our community, of the interest of students. And so we um, proposed a fifth research project using those same themes that will run through the four ethnic group units. Um, and that will be a student-selected ethnic group or subgroup that they'd like to particularly research. They'll use those same themes in their research to produce a product, um, which will be at the discretion of the teachers, perhaps a research paper, perhaps a multimedia presentation. Um, and you know, I can only envision right now what kind of products that they will create. But this allows for a student who has an interest, maybe a personal background or an ethnic group that they'd like to study, um, to bring in a group of their choice. Thank you for that. I know even when the state was working on this, there was some disagreement on what groups should be included and not included. So thank you for that. And one last quick question. Remind me when this becomes a graduation requirement. It's for the graduating class of 2030. Oh, 2030. Okay. That's a graduation requirement. Okay. Thank you very much. And thank you for the no, I want to thank the committee for the hard work you put in. You know, it's not that easy to get a, a course from ground up to um, you know, getting approval all within a year. Well, actually less than a year. So thank you so much for your effort. Um, I do have one question. Dr. Kaufman mentioned the, the partnership with Fullerton College. How, how similar is our pilot program to the program that's being offered at Fullerton College? Um, the Fullerton College program um, is unique uh, in that it's one particular ethnic group for the classes that they offer. So they might have an entire class on Latin America um, as an ethnic studies group. What we're doing is we're offering a, a broader selection for our students. Um, and so um, I believe Fullerton College offers Asian American studies, Latin American studies, African American studies, but each of those is a separate semester course. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next on our agenda is a report on the nature and resolution of all Williams settlement complaints. So I'd like to call Executive Director of Administrative Services, Dr. Carl Zener, to present the report. Well, thank you, President Klatsker, members of the board, and Dr. McLaughlin. Per the Williams settlement, it is required that a quarterly report is made to the Board of Trustees during a meeting of the board with regard to the number of complaints and nature of the resolutions to the complaints received by the schools in the district. There have been no Williams settlement complaints during the third quarter of reporting, and per the Williams settlement, a report will be filed with the Orange County Department of Education. This will keep the district in compliance with the requirements of the law. Thank you, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Zener. Next is revised board policy 5650, student dress and grooming. And this is an action item for us tonight. So I'd like to call on Dr. Zener again to provide information on the revised board policy. Fantastic. Thank you again, President Klatsker, members of the board, and Dr. McLaughlin. At the beginning of the 21-22 school year, sites reported that the current dress code was a very important subject with students. Board policy 5650, student dress and grooming, was last revised in November 1978. In response to this concern, a process was put in place to update board policy 5650, student dress and grooming. 
District administrators began working with the Student Advisory Council, SAC, in August 2021 to facilitate discussions and received input regarding the board policy. It's been an extensive process. There's been many, many meetings. I'd just like to go over a few highlights of what we've done in GRACE and SAC, as well as the principals and their administrative teams. So starting in August and September, we reviewed the current board policy and administrative regulation. A dress code training was attended, put on by AALRR. We reviewed information with our SAC members. In October, we reviewed the current BP and AR. They provided feedback. The SAC members gathered feedback from their peers and discussed the proposed changes with ASB members back at their sites. And we also reviewed surrounding districts board policies. In November, we prepared a draft of a revised BP and AR and got feedback from SAC members and ASB members and principals again. In January, a draft copy of the BP and AR was provided to District Legal Council with feedback. In February, SAC members agreed to move forward with the revised BP and AR. A draft of the BP and AR was reviewed by Cabinet and AC, and a draft of the AR was approved by Administrative Council. And as you remember last March in March, in March we re a revised BP was presented for first reading information at our board meeting on March 8th. Board members provided some very valuable input on wording of the revised BP and AR, and input from board members was approved by SAC members, and the newly revised A's AR was approved by Administrative Council. And that brings us to where we are today, where we have a revised board policy presented for second reading. We have a revised AR that is included on the agenda for information only. Uh, if we have good luck tonight, a good outcome, SAC members will begin planning and training workshops for students and staff using the revised BP and AR to modify, update the school site dress codes to include in the student handbook for next school year. So before I turn it back over to you, President Klasker, I just want to do a big thank you to Grace and our hundreds of ASB students who have participated in mature discussions with us for the last seven months and provide a valuable input. So, revised board policy 5650 student dress code and grooming is presented for second reading adoption. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zener. Is there a motion to approve the revised board policy 5650 student dress and grooming? I move. Thank you, Joanne. A second? Yeah, a second. Thank you, Chester. Do board members have any questions? No, I have a comment. Okay. In 1978, I was a junior in high school. Since then, I've graduated from college, had a 35-year teaching career, and went gray. So I think it was about time to update the policy. <laughs> Anyone else? I, I just have a question uh, because I really don't know the answer. Was this a dramatic change in the policy? I wouldn't call it dramatic. I would just call it current. Okay. I mean, I didn't see it as being revolutionary. No. I just saw it as evo evolutionary, I that, guess. That's yeah. a, evolutionary is a perfect way to put it. So, mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put Grace on the spot again because we only have one more meeting with her. Grace, any, <laughs> any input you want to share on this experience? Um, it was a really great experience. Um, it was really eye-opening to not only be in these discussions, but also lead the discussions. Um, we've had this on our agenda on every SAC meeting since August um, and in each meeting different ASB students come so we've had I think like way over 50 students just come in and tell us their opinion on the dress code and now I think we really honed it down to a language that's not really um, subject to anyone's opinion it's all right there so I don't I'm really excited to see how this will be implemented next year yeah thank you Grace um, while we're on Grace, uh, would you like to <laughs> would you like to cast a preferential vote? Yes, I approve. They, I would hope so after all the work you've put in on it. Thank you very much, board members. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We now have a new policy that's not as old as me. All right. <laughs> Next on the agenda is facilities and construction. So I'd like to call Executive Director of Facilities and Construction, Todd Butcher, and Assistant Superintendent of Business Services, Ruben Hernandez, to the podium to give an update on facilities. Good evening, President Klatsker, members of the board, Dr. McLaughlin. Uh, it's my pleasure to be up here for your last presentation by me. Uh, it has been wonderful to work here, and I appreciate it. 
But I will move forward with this presentation. Weston showed me how to do this. Here we go. No, too far. Yep. No, I'm just way too far. <laughs> Pardon me. Up. And Weston told me that that would happen. This means you have to stay longer. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we can train you. I need more IT uh -huh. training. Keep going the other way. Yeah. Is it like bench with a button? Or oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Everybody close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going the right way. Did you do that? I was going the right way. Is that All right. Let me get the other way. Can't get. There we go. Bear with me. All right, there we go. You gotta turn this thing back on, Weston. There you go. All right, next slide, Weston. How's that? There we go. Peace. Sorry about that. Yeah, we're fine. No, Weston showed me how to do it, but he, he did, did on my defense. He said well, he's having technical difficulties. But anyways, all right. So for the remaining projects at Measure I, uh, as you can tell, at Fullerton, we are we're currently working on the, the auditorium, and I'll be discussing that further uh, with the completion date of August. Um, the, the, the swimming pool is in design, well on its way to be submitted to DSA, and we have an anticipated construction start of October. Uh, the exterior weight room wall will be completed at the end of the month, and I'll remind the board this is the uncovered wall that when we had to take down the gymnasium that was exposed, that had to go back to DSA, and that is a prior Field Act building, so it was very interesting on how we had to approach that. Uh, La Habra Theater uh, modernization, this is actually the uh, lecture hall. Uh, it'll be completed this July. Uh, our science classrooms, unfortunately, due to the state of uh, the world right now, we're trying to get materials and supplies, we were not able to secure the actual material epoxy to make the sinks in time to complete it this summer. Uh, so working with the site administration team, we've elected to postpone that to give the market some time to catch up on material supplies so that we'll have a better finished product next summer. Uh, and the pool is well on its way, and I'm going to show you that in a little bit, and it should uh, uh, be completed at the end of May. Uh, Sonora, I'll remind the, the uh, board that these science classrooms are in good shape, and, and if, uh, if you'll remember, we discussed this one would be the, the project that, in case we run out of money, this is the one not to do because it is in, in the best condition. Uh, and then uh, the aquatic facility will start in July. So you can kind of see that as soon as we get done with La Habra's, we're going to roll right into Sonora's, and it's well on its way through DSA. Next slide, please, Weston. Uh, we're going to do some deferred maintenance asphalt this year at Buena Park, La Habra, and Sonora. Next slide. We're going to paint Fullerton High School. We're going to replace 55 classrooms full of uh, carpeting district-wide. Next slide. And then I want to talk about ESSER funds. Uh, and if you'll remember, uh, we were able to leverage the ESSER funds to do some HVAC upgrades at Buena Park, Fullerton, and, and the uh, Sonora Gymnasium is fully funded by ESSER funds. And that was once a Measure I project. So that was very good for us to be able to do that. We're also going to be replacing the Sunny Hills three portables that are currently down in the Ag facility to a permanent building. And the Troy six portables that are there are going to become a permanent building as well. So we will have no more portables in this district. Next slide. Uh, a couple of non-measure I projects I want to bring up to the board. Uh, what I mean by non-measure I is uh, the freezer replacements at Buena Park and Sunny Hills are funded by the Food Service Department. Uh, we have new scoreboards going in at La Habra and Troy as we speak, and those were funded by the school site uh, carryover funds, uh, and as well as the gym speech and speaker system. Next slide, please. Uh, La Haber Pool, as it used to sit as the little square-shaped or L-shaped pool. Next slide. Uh, this is the current, the same location. As you can see, the, the bottom is poured. Uh, all the sides are poured in place. Uh, the lane lines are uh, actually the next slide, please. You can see where the lane uh, tile is in. Uh, we've put the retaining wall up that separates the pool from the, the softball fields as well as the cantilevered deck is, is uh, poured and ready to go. Uh, next slide, please. 
We've already got the new scoreboard post uh, installed and we're already starting with the perimeter fencing. So you can see that we start from the bottom, get the pool up and then we're starting to close in on it. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the ticket booth that faces uh, into the pool. Uh, as you can see, as you come in off the basketball courts, you'll be able to go to the new ticket windows and then you'll, there'll be a gate entrance right there uh, in between the, the uh, building and the, the swimming pool. Uh, you'll be able to, to see the new restrooms and the showers uh, are located on the outside to be able to shower before and after going into the pool, uh, as well as a new concession building. Next slide, please. I uh, just want to give you a quick shot of inside the new casework. The um, windows will be put in uh, fairly soon. So if we can go to the next slide. Now I'd like to bring up uh, Fullerton uh, Seismic Retrofit, and I'll remind the board this is not a modernization. This is a full seismic retrofit. Uh, and any time we do a project through the Division of State Architects, all three divisions have to approve it. Structural, fire life safety, and access. So those are the three facets that we had to improve. Next slide. So we, uh, this project includes installation of fiber reinforced panel, panel polymers, excuse me, which is called FRP. Installation of a East, east Bustridge, East Bust, uh, Colonnade Reinforcement, uh, Bustris, excuse me, Colonnade Reinforcement, Insulation of Concrete Walls at the Stage, uh, the steel at the column are half inch thick plates, I'll be showing you that, and then bent steel plates at the roof line. All of these things help the building to keep it from twisting in the event of an earthquake or rolling in the event of an earthquake, tying the roof into the box so that if if the, if the walls were to rotate diagonally, the ceiling would come in. Just like if you have, had a box, you know, when we were kids, we built a box of cards, you move it to this one wall, the, the whole thing would collapse. So that's what we're trying to prevent. So what this picture depicts is the black vertical stripes are the FRP starting to get put on the exterior of the building. Next slide. This is before the stage. It's painted black because uh, that's the rear of the stage for performances. Next slide. And now you'll see we're starting to put uh, the progress of putting up the scaffolding because we had to put up a, a full, huge, brand new solid concrete wall all the way around it to prevent the inside the internal of the building to going back and forth. And that wall goes all the way down from the ceiling all the way to the roof, all the way to the, to the roof line. Next slide. Uh, this right here you can see on the stage we're starting to put the FRP that is all the all in the black is all the FRP that's going up against the wall. Next slide, please. Then we get into the clock tower. Uh, first, the first one on the left shows the original uh, clock tower. Then we put, and put all the scaffolding up and you can start to see the black stripes going up where they're putting the, the FRP to support that, uh, the clock tower. And then the third slide indicates that it's uh, being plastered, replastered back to original condition. And then the last slide is them painting it as they work their way down. Next slide. This shows the, uh, in the, the detail that we had to go to take off the ornate plastic or the ornate wood columns that go around there, tag them, identify them, number them to make sure they all go back in the same place. And it depicts that we've got them stripped down and you can see those go all the way to the ceiling. Next slide. So you can see them, they've been stripped they're getting the, the FRP put on them. And the last slide shows you that it goes all, that takes that all the way up the, and the FRP ties all the way up to the columns, clear up at the ceiling line so that you have a solid structure all the way up to the top. Next slide. This is the stage wall that we were talking about before it happened, before we put the wall in. And the next slide shows you the additional concrete wall that had to go up there to, to support that. Next slide. And then this is starting to put in the half inch steel plates. So not only did we have to pour a new concrete wall, but then we had to come in with half inch steel plates to support that. And what the two gentlemen are doing in the middle in the last picture is they're actually, those plates are bolted clear through the concrete wall all the way through and tightened up. Next slide. So this talks about the, the buttress on the uh, outside of the colonnade and the reinforcement of that. Um, you can see all that concrete that you're seeing there with the steel coming up out of it, that's 30 feet down on the ground. And that keeps the building from going this way. Uh, so you can see we've tied the, the, the steel up in the next slide that ties it clear up to the top of where the buttress will be. Next slide. That's the buttresses that are completed. And those are the 
concrete buttresses again that stop the colonnade from shifting and the building from shifting. The steel uh, members that are sticking out there are going back to tie in the, the uh, arched walkway over to the admin. Next slide. This is just depicting the amount of steel that we put in the colonnade reinforcement underneath all the way down. They keep because you didn't want that colonnade to flex and then, and then fall inside of the walkway. Next slide. Just one more shot of it. Uh, one, more, one more slide, please. Uh, this shows inside the, the uh, bent steel plates. You can see the little arrow, but I do have a better picture. But these bent steel plates went up, and they go in, and they tie the roof line to the walls to keep the roof from lifting in the event of a rolling earthquake and to keep it from the wall from being pushed in in the event of an earthquake. Next, next slide, please. So there you can see them running all the way down the side. And so now what, what uh, we're wor working with uh, Fullerton Heritage uh, Group and the, uh, the group that actually comes out and fixes the Kessler mural for us, which are historical painters, they will, take, they will go back in there and they will repaint those. You'll still be able to see the bolt heads, but they're going to make them blend in as, as best as possible to take it back to original condition. Next slide, please. This just shows you the, uh, the bolts going through the wall. And then the next slide shows you that they're no longer there. And we've turned it back into original condition. But yet it's still structurally sound, holding everything together. Next slide. Uh, this is just, uh, I wanted to show you some of the protection efforts that we went through. This is the Kessler mural. And then the next slide shows all the protection that we've put on it. Uh, our staff and the construction uh, crew that's out there have done a great job of protecting that in place, as well as the entire building. Next slide. And then, of course, we have the pipe organ. Uh, we've been continually protecting it, and, and it has had no damage at all. Next slide. So now I want to go into the street side of uh, uh, Lemon and show you what we've had, what we were required to do to make it uh, ADA compliant. It, that's going to include the new lobby. So we had to get wherever. Uh, Able-bodied people can, can go. We have to be able to provide the same access for uh, disabled people. Uh, we also have chair lifts that go up to the stage and down to the basement, full-size elevator down to the basement, and then we've done what, what we're calling interior slab adjustments that gives uh, people in wheelchairs a flat location to sit. Uh, and those, that required some interior seating changes. Next slide, please. So this shows you a shot before. Next slide. This shows you the banning of them building the, the pour in place walls. The little squares you see are the, uh, the actual uh, pathways for the elevator to get down to the basement floor. And when you drive by it, it kind of shocks you to see how tall those walls are. And I want to take a minute to explain that. So you're walking off the street level. And then if you go around to the front, you see the stairs that we go up to? So now, if you're in a wheelchair, you will go into the new lobby, and then you'll take that ramp all the way up to the lobby floor. That's why that wall had to be so tall, so, so that we still had to have nine feet above the finished floor so that people could go up, the, go up the ramp and go in through there. But that's why everybody looks and says, why is that wall so tall? That's because of the elevation changes to, to get you up there, all the, to get up to all these locations. Next slide. Uh, this, this slide starts, you can see where we're stripping off the walls. Uh, you can see where the uh, stairway, we had to remove it to get up into the, the first section uh, right by the tree. And then it has the new foyer. And you can barely see the little teeny tiny ticket windows right there as well. Next slide. This, they've stripped them all. You can start, you can see the arches that have been gone back into. Uh, they're starting, they framed out. You can see the little square now. That's actually the mechanical room for the elevator. Next slide. And then now you can see we've started to put the roof on, and it's starting to take shape of, of how you're going to see how that side of that building looks when we're all done. Next slide. This one shows you that it's all roofed in and it's all dry now. So we're going to start working on the inside. This is where the bathrooms, the ADA compliant restrooms will be, the new, the new lobby to get, be able to, for access. And then in, from that lobby, you can get any direction you want to. You can get into the center. And I'll remind the board that we did not do 
any work on the balcony. We had to make that decision which, which way we had to go. So uh, we got a waiver on the balcony because we're providing access in the, you can sit in the back if you're in a wheelchair, you can sit in the middle, you can sit in the front, and we have access to the, to the stage now. Um, next slide. So uh, if you have questions, I'm here to ask questions. If not at this point, I'm going to introduce Ruben to come up and talk about uh, some funding. Um, yeah, I had a couple questions. Um, you said, so on Lemon, that's where the, the new elevator will be? Mm -hmm. And then that's where the bathrooms will be as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did we get new seats in there as well? No. No, they're no. the same Th this is just that, that This is just the seismic and the ADA upgrades. Okay. Yeah, Thank we you. haven't done anything on the inside as far as modernization. No, Marilyn, did you, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, Chester. Go ahead. No, I want to thank Todd for his services to the district, and uh, congratulations on your retirement. We'll miss you. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Uh, I really appreciate all the detail of that. I drive by, and I just couldn't get that detail from the, from the street. I understand. Um, I did read the articles in the Fullerton uh, newsletter, which gave me some information, too. Appreciated that from your students, Laura. Um, I, my recollection is that we that, that the seismic work that's been done is more extensive than the board originally heard needed to be done. It seemed to me it was that back of the stage and then the, the tower, which had things which were falling. In the investigation, did we find a lot more that needed to be done? It seems like you've extended beyond what I thought the original need yeah, was. Yeah, anytime you're working with a historical building, that's what triggers all the additional work because uh, traditional methods of construction won't work in that facility because we would be disrupting too much of the historical uh, okay. preference of that building. So there was a lot of creative ideas how to reach the structural improvements and still be able to protect the historical protect values. Historic, uh, thank you. One other question. Um, not with regard to the auditorium, but you mentioned the, I, I'm really happy to see the replacement of portables on the two campuses. Uh, I didn't, was that one of our original plans or is that something, no. okay, so that's. We, we were able to leverage the ESSER funds for that. Okay, one. that's great. And then uh, the one last question I have, um, I know the Sonora pool has to go in the same footprint. Is that true with the Fullerton pool as well? Mm -hmm. It is. Now, now we are, but we, we do have the ability at Fullerton. It gets bumped out about 10 or 12 feet from its original location. Okay. But it will disrupt the use for a period of time. So. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. You bet. Any other board member questions? Joy? Thank you very much in general. And the auditorium has been five, six years of constant meetings and negotiations and working with the community and thankfully due to your work that beautiful building which is now on the National Historic Register if I understood the Observer article correctly um, to maintain and preserve that really appreciate it and thanks for all your years of service it's been a pleasure working with you it's been my it's been my pleasure and honor and the the building itself has always been on the historical register oh, okay. the adjustment was for the Kessler mural oh thank you I was confused by that thank you for that clarification mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. Butcher. Before you leave, we've got one other thing from it, Dr. And Bradley. I meant to, I tried to do this last month, so I'm going to do it officially now because unless there's a special meeting in the next three weeks and one day, Grace, that's how long he has. Um, then he's graduating before you. Uh, uh, he is graduating, uh, but yeah, but he he's committed to stay close and as a phone a friend type of opportunity. And we have another piece of the presentation that shows the transition. But just for the public, Mr. Butcher's been uh, in this business for a long time, uh, and it's somebody I. I feel fortunate to have worked with last nine months um, as far as his commitment to what he does and why he does it. He's been a big participant in our leadership development. He's been able to kind of share and showcase kind of his message is all about kids. Uh, and at the end of the day, that, that's really what we want to impact. And sometimes we, as educators in the classroom, kind of impact the hearts and, and the heads. And so we don't see the end results always. He has a lasting, uh, some lasting monuments that he's been able to shepherd through with the board's guidance and a pretty phenomenal team. So it's just 
been my pleasure to work with you the last nine months. I know it's not the end because I'll be calling, um, but for the next three weeks and one day, uh, we will be squeezing every bit out of him that we can um, so that we, we can transfer that into institutional knowledge into the next phase. So we will have some small celebrations. He's a private man, and, and we'll respect that. But I just publicly wanted to say thank you on behalf of uh, the Fullerton Joint Union High School District, the kids, and just myself in the last nine months. It's been great working with you. So thanks, thank you. Todd. Thank you very much. I, I wanted to ask him if he feels a little bit sad leaving before this is all finished. <laughs> you know, it's bittersweet. Uh, you know, but it, it, and a dear old friend once told me, when you start hearing footsteps, it's time to go. There you go. And, well, thank and, you. And I, I've heard him, so it's time you to go. You are appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Butcher. So we'll continue the presentation, uh, Mr. Hernandez, and he's going to talk a little bit about the transition and, and what we have in store moving forward. Yes. That's right there. Good luck. <laughs> I will make an attempt. <laughs> Good evening, President Klasker, board members, Dr. McLaughlin. Um, it's hard to follow up those, uh, those uh, photos and the progress. So those are awesome pictures and, and just great progress to see where we're at in our facilities projects. But I'm here to talk about where we're at financially and, and where, we're, where we're headed. And so um, just a quick overview about the amount of money we received to support our facilities projects. Uh, Measure I, our general obligation bond, um, uh, accounted for $175 million. Um, and then through uh, Todd and his team working diligently with uh, people up, up uh, at the Capitol, we also uh, accounted for an additional $20, uh, 20 million dollars in state matching funds. Um, we've also leveraged our developer fees um, and as well as our uh, redevelopment agency uh, funds as well, which is known as RDAs. Um, and so when we total all those dollar amounts up, we get to the dollar of $197 million, 700,000. So it's a, it's, a, it's a good amount of money, but I think what, uh, Next slide, please. Oh, can you go back one? It is dangerous. I'm not going to touch it. Um, and so, uh, and so, this is an interesting slide. I apologize for the smallness of it, but everything highlighted in red is completed projects and verified and 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 certified through DSA. So it means those projects are golden, and we're we're moving forward, right? So. We have projects highlighted in green. Those are also completed projects, but those are completed projects with uh, state matching funds. Um, and then things that are highlighted and are just left in white, are, those are pending and open projects. Um, and just one thing I wanted to kind of point out was on the previous slide, we saw the $197 million, and you could see circled here in a, as $194 million. Why the difference of that $2.9 million? And so we just wanted to um, reassure the board that we set aside those monies for emergency purposes. So as we continue to uh, move forward with the uh, projects that Mr. Butcher referenced in regards to they're in the queue, they're, they're getting ready to go out for bid and we're waiting for the right time to do that. Um, when that does happen, these additional $2.9 million will hopefully be able to absorb any sort of cost escalations that may take place from now until then. Um, and another interesting fact on here, and this is a huge kudos to the way uh, Mr. Butcher has delivered our projects here at Fullerton Joint, and that is in typical school districts, um, you would tend to see a construction management team come in to support the district to get us through a lot of these types of projects because of the lever level of expertise that they may have. Um, bringing Mr. Butcher on, he brought those level of expertise and we built our own district own program um, had we went with the CM, that would cost us around 15% of our total overall dollars, which would have been about $29.6 million. You may not be able to read it, but that first line item up there says estimated $10.4 million about to run it as a district owned program. That saved us over $19 million for us to redirect that and put that back into our facilities. So huge kudos to Mr. Butcher and his team for being able to deliver it this way, because it's very unique and most districts don't do it this way. Um, next slide, please. And so can you click one more time, please? And so can you, so you could see here the, the change that's taking place as, as uh, Mr. Butcher is now retiring. We are going back to an old model where business services, under the umbrella of business services, uh, our facilities, director of facilities maintenance and operation will now be under that uh, uh, guidance and support. And so uh, thank you to Todd and his team for being able to deliver Measure I and prep 
the rest of Measure I and getting ready for delivering of those projects, we still have the team on board to get us through the rest, the rest of Measure I to finish those projects, and they are fully knowledgeable and aware of what's uh, what those projects uh, entail and how how it's going to um, require our support to get through those projects. And so, um, but what what then then does happen is now a transition with. Uh, pending board approval, Mr. Waltram, uh, being able to basically pick up that, that baton, like he mentioned, and, and running with it and, and being able to complete Measure I projects. Um, and then at the same time, um, being able to uh, uh, get the support and, 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 um, and the expertise that Todd's leaving behind to be able to run with that. So we look forward to that process. Next slide, please. And so uh, next steps is really, uh, Pending board approval, Mar uh, May 2nd, uh, Ted, uh, Mr. Ted Wallstrom will be joining us, which is perfect timing as he'll have a couple days to overlap with uh, Mr. Butcher to be able to discuss uh, the cross training, uh, to dive deep into projects that we did and why we did them and where they're currently standing and what's going on with them. Is there any additional things that need to happen moving forward with them? Um, or maybe even just the maintenance that, that comes with those projects, right? Because we, when you build them, you still have to maintain them. And now that Mr. Wallstrom will be overseeing the maintenance and operations from that lens, being able to guide his team and and figuring out how to uh, make those connections and 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 support our MNO team in the manner which is required. So the other part of that is is connecting and getting out to our sites and and doing site visits, uh, doing departmental visits, and and creating those meaningful connections in regards to uh, his transition into his new role with us. Um, another thing that's gonna be huge in that transition and working with Mr. Butcher is, is identifying our summer projects. Uh, what are the Measure I projects that are happening this summer? Uh, what is our deep cleaning process with our custodial team and how does that work? Um, work orders that are pending in our classrooms that can be done while kids are in the classroom and how do we manage those in the summer and what's happening and as far as like big projects from that lens. So. A couple of things early on in the slide uh, that Mr. Butcher was refer referencing is our deferred, ma uh, deferred maintenance projects, and that'll be another item that we'll have to bring up, up to speed on as well. So, um, and then obviously our main focus with anything we do on a year-to-year -year basis besides bringing a new director on board is, is to make sure that all of these things have been met in time for the start of our school year of August 15th. So, um, and then to finalize and just uh, complete Measure I projects is gonna be the next step, right? Because that bleeds into the following school year where we have a tentative end date of some of Measure I projects being around August of 2023. So obviously that'll depend on when we bid and when we start those projects, but right now that's kind of where our project timeline is. So um, again, just a big huge thank you to Mr. Butcher and, and where he's leaving us, um, all the things that he's done and supported us in this process and the things that he'll continue to do as, um, as he supports us with uh, Mr. Walsham in his transition. So. This concludes our presentation, unless, you, unless the board has any further questions for us. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, thank okay. you both right. very, very much. Okay, next is the consent calendar. Are there any items that board members would like pulled from the consent calendar? Okay, not seeing any. Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? Move Marilyn? Thank you, Chester. Do board members or the student board member have any questions or comments? Okay, Grace, would you like to cast a preferential vote? I approve. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see, oh, it's not a roll call, right, Linda? Okay, perfect. So uh, board members, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, are there any comments from the board, from Grace or from Dr. McLaughlin? Dr. McLaughlin? I'm all out. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, the board will now recess to closed session and continue discussion on the items mentioned previously.